All right, friends, and hey, let's take a look here at uh, our lecture three of the pivot, okay? So if, if we, we've got to be careful that hermeneutics doesn't assume just objectivity, like I can stand in God's eye view and, and, and be the only one who understands what is right and, and, and true and faithful about this text. Instead, I, I'm, I want to be confessional and open about the biases and the limitations of my perspective and their impact on my reading of the text. And so I want to I be able to come with a certain degree of humility. So I want to say hermeneutics is all about encounter. It's how you and I encounter the text that matters. So too often as I meet people, they, they tend to encounter the text via a position of power, especially those of us who are being educated. We know something. So we come into text and we, we stand over the text and we, we assert our power over this text. And, and that power over the text means that we're trying to master the text rather than be mastered by the text. And when, when I come into an engagement with someone or a situation, and I'm assuming a place of control and power, I already see a breakdown in the interaction. It's the same thing with the text. If I come to the text demanding it to say something, then it's already going to influence what this text could bring to me and to offer me. So I want to come to the text expecting an encounter that is risky. Because that's what encounters are, right? When I, when I meet somebody for the first time, and I truly come to that person intending for this to be a meaningful engagement, then my engagement with them will be risky because not only will I affect them, but it will they will affect me. Same thing goes with the text. I should come to the text anticipating to be affected by the text. Encounters, if we have a meaningful encounter, they're outside our control. Sometimes they don't produce what we want them to produce. I don't care if that's an interaction with another human being or a text that we are reading. They, they don't always produce. They're outside of our control. They're slippery, right? And, and we can often arrive at encounters with people, with texts, with assumptions that are ultimately undermined. What if I came looking for something and in my openness to that interaction, that engagement, something happened that undermined the assumptions that I had in the first place? So in 2009, I started a degree program at Vanderbilt University. Vanderbilt has a long-standing tradition of being considered as one of the most theologically liberal uh, seminaries in the United States. And for me, it was precisely what I needed at the moment. Because whether I realized it or not, as open-minded as I thought I was to encounters with the text from different perspectives, I still in some respects had become entrenched in many of my positions. And it didn't become evident to me until I got into a philosophy class with, with uh, one of the most brilliant human beings I'd ever met. His name's Dr. Victor Anderson. And Dr. Victor Anderson wasn't all that interested in making me feel good about uh, the ways in which I understood the world, the text, uh, the way I understood my engagement with Christianity or with philosophy. And he wanted to push back and challenge on that. And at first, I rebuffed against it. And I was fighting him constantly. And that's what I realized I was doing. I was fighting him. I'd come to the encounter of that class already with assumptions about the way things should be, the way it should be treated, the ways I should be affirmed, the ways in which the text should be read. When I encountered something that was crossways with that, that felt like a threat to me. And that threat made me respond or react in ways that were not consistent with the values that I held. And I went up to his office to challenge him at one point, and he listened graciously, and then he said, Jeff, hermeneutics begins at the point that we seek to find affinity with those with whom we most often disagree and seek to disagree with those with whom we most often find affinity. And, and that statement clung, hung in the air for me because that's what I wasn't doing. I wasn't suspending my judgments and my assumptions so that my assumptions and judgments could be called into question or undermined if I needed them to. Hermeneutics is a dangerous, is a dangerous way of living. <laughs> it, it's risky. It's vulnerable. It pushes us into our authenticity. 
Our reading of the text, this reading and a stepping into this brand new world that I that I talked about, this walking around, is a world that that wants to have a reciprocal impact on. It wants to do something to us. Hermeneutics isn't about me being able to measure out what I want from it. It's not about setting my agenda and then going to look for the text to tell me to have it tell me what it want, what I already wanted to say. Hermeneutics is about this profound encounter with the text that wants to affect me deeply. That wants to poke and prod and put and and point out the the limitations of my perspective. Hermeneutics wants to undermine assumptions that I have. Hermeneutics uh, genuine, theologically astute, biblical hermeneutics wants to wrestle me to the ground. It doesn't want me to stand over it so that I can tell the text what it ought to say. It wants me to stand under it so that I have to be dependent upon how the Spirit wants to navigate what it says in light of my limitations, my place, my perspective in the world, seeking to bring me in a harmony and alignment with, with God's ordering of this world. Hermeneutics wants to wrestle me to the ground. It wants to have its way with me. It wants to leave me different. At points damaged. At points healed. It wants to disrupt me. It wants to disturb me. It wants to unsettle me. It wants to complicate. Biblical hermeneutics wants to complicate our lives. Not not so that we're left walking around going, oh my gosh. No, it wants to it wants to help us to realize. That there is a world in front of us that's being presented. A world as it is. Where we are nothing more than, than consumers and, and producers. A world in which the powerful get their way. A, a, a world in which everything can be um, reduced down to a transaction. It doesn't want to leave me in that world of wondering what meaning and purpose looks like. No, it wants to challenge. It wants to disrupt. It wants to invite me into a rendering of the world as God sees it not as I would intend it to be hermeneutics wants to do that to me we limit our encounter if we're only going to the text to get something out of it what would happen if we go to the text to allow it to get something out of us but in order for that there's a virtue necessary for hermeneutics and that's what we're going to talk about in the next lecture